Hey, good evening, folks. Welcome to the Let's Go Fishing Show. Uh, yeah, I'm Steve Cox, the host, and uh, my guest tonight is James Knuckles. James, Steve, glad to have you, man. I appreciate the opportunity to be here, and been looking forward to this this week. And uh, I think we've got a good show lined up for the folks. I think we have. I just hope we have enough time to get it all in. Uh, folks, listen, James is, is uh, uh, a local fisherman, local tournament fisherman, and a, and a tournament director. James has been running a lot of tournaments in this area for the last 15 years, I guess. About or maybe, 30 now. About 30 <laughs> now. Okay. All right. I missed it by a few. But it's been around a long time, and uh, uh, I've enjoyed being uh, acquainted with James and all that kind of stuff. And, and he's he's got a, uh, a new deal here this year. Uh, uh, with the Phoenix Phoenix boats and, and uh, Glenn Reynolds uh, racing down there, uh, Glenn sells the Phoenix boats, and James is uh, uh, he's their director. Uh, James, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about it, and then we'll get into the film. Well, Glenn is a big sponsor of yours, and and he does sell the Phoenix boats, and we're proud to uh, have him as one of our dealers for Phoenix boats there, and he's been a great help with us in the tournaments over the years, and. We certainly appreciate him, but our new tournament this year is going to be called the Volunteer Bass Trail, and it's something that's never been done before in a team tournament. We're featuring two levels of competition, and we have an orange level, which is a $50 entry per boat, and a white level, which is $150 uh, entry per boat. So each level will just fish against that particular level, and both levels feature 100% payback and one place for ever five entries. Oh man, that sounds good. I, I was, uh, uh, I, you know, Glenn and I were looking at this down at his place the other day, and and uh, I said, man, I said, the best thing I can do, I'm just going to get James over there to explain all this, Glenn. I said that that'll solve the problem. Well, and it is something new that's never been done in a team tournament format before, and. Uh, you know, with the uh, orange level where you have a $50 uh, per boat entry fee, that would be $25 a person. And hopefully with that, we can get a lot of new folks started that are, have been interested in tournament fishing and maybe just didn't have the confidence to get into bigger tournaments. And, you know, we just want to get a lot of new folks uh, started in fishing and, and also take care of the ones that's been fishing with us for a long time. And, and this was one way that I thought we might could do both at, at one time and the guys that are new and getting started in the orange level you know they're going to be around a lot of experienced fishermen in the white level and and really have a lot of opportunities to learn some new techniques james you know that's a big thing it uh you know it <laughs> It's like being around a, a beehive. You know, if you fool with it long enough, you're going to get stung. That's correct. <laughs> so, Steve, one other thing that we're doing, too, that will help a lot of fathers or mothers or, or both, you know, that uh, we're not charging a membership this mm -hmm. year for 17 and under. Mm-hmm. Great. So, so for the kids out there that's still in high school and stuff, uh, you know, that's just another option we're given so it won't cost them so much money. Well, that sounds good. You know and I know uh, 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 fishing's expensive. It certainly is. Uh, especially tournament fishing. And, and uh, so, uh, yeah, that uh, sounds like the pricing's great. I, I, I really do like that. I looked at it, and that's a, that's a good point about letting these younger people get started out without having to uh, spend the arm in the lake. We're real excited about it. Uh, I think it's going to be... Uh something that's really takes off you know we've had a lot of interest in it so far and you know we've really only had it out there on the internet now and stuff and putting our flyers out for about three or four weeks and mm -hmm. and our uh, you know if you do want to find out more about it on the internet you can go to www.volunteerbasstrail.com and uh, it shows uh, all the rules and uh, tournament dates and all that and uh, we certainly appreciate you giving us the opportunity to be here tonight. Well it's, it's my pleasure uh, James sure is and uh, uh, as fishermen the tournament fishermen you know anything we can do to to help further the the uh, tournament trails and that kind of thing that's what we want to do uh, for sure and I appreciate you coming over. Uh, James is going to get into uh, he brought a bunch of baits here he and I are going to talk some fishing here in a little bit 
uh, but we're going to show some film, and uh, I hope Herschel's got my sponsors running there for sure. Uh, we're going to show some film here, and, and uh, you know, I, I want to say right quick uh, two things I got involved in this past weekend. The, the uh, uh, Riverside Sportsman's Expo up there in, at Clinton at the church house there, and uh, Second Baptist Church, and uh, it was a great little I, you know, I, that was my first trip, and, and uh, so I shot some film up there. Uh, two of my sponsors was up there, Bunch Marine, Reynolds Racing, had some boats up there, a lot of new, a lot of vendors up there showing fishing tackle and stuff, James, and uh, I was just really impressed. Uh, Craig, Craig really Witt, a uh, gentleman I got acquainted with, and uh, got to meet Hank Parker, and so uh, anyway, Herschel, uh, you want to run that little bit of film for us? Hey folks, I'm up here at uh, Clinton at uh, your Riverside Sportsman's Expo and got a few of the Reynolds racing boats here. And, uh, we're going to get a picture of those and try to talk to Glenn. <laughs> Nice picture of the Phoenix boat, beautiful boat Glenn's got here, folks. So, get a picture of that. Hey, folks, I'm here looking at one of the Bunch Marines Ranger aluminum boats, and man, that thing sure is pretty. So, uh, uh, that's kind of got late in the day, but uh, we're up here at the uh, uh, expo at Clinton in uh, Riverside Sportsman's. So, uh, Curtis got some boats up here. And like I said, that's that Ranger aluminum boat right there, beautiful boat. Uh, got a 115 Mercury on it. Looks great. Need to get by his business down there and check it out. Okay, folks, I'm here with Alan Collette. Alan, tell us about the fish there behind you. All right, well, this is the old state record striper caught by a friend of mine, Mike Rich. I guess the interesting thing about this is it was caught on 10 pound test line and a number 13 black and silver Rapala. And then this is a fish I caught, which is actually the old state record Northern Pike, 22 pounds, mm -hmm. caught on eight pound test line and another black and silver number 13 19. Rapala. That was a Husky and this was just the regular Rapala. Both of these that were caught out of this body of water. Uh, this one on downstream more into Melton Hill Lake. Mm -hmm. And this one actually just a little bit down the river. Oh man. And so, uh, I, I was fishing with my kids. My son, who I guess was probably about seven or eight years old, yeah. took a look in the mouth of that fish and he said, Dad, is that thing in the Tyrannosaurus Rex family? <laughs> so these are old state, state records. records. I think the new record uh, is probably around 25 pounds. And of course, the striper record Reagan, now is up around 65, 65, 66 pounds. Yeah. OK. Alan, appreciate your time. Uh, See you Thursday time. Night. All righty. Good to meet you. Yeah. Okay, folks, I got Alan back here, and he's got his boat here. Alan, tell us about the boat you got. Well, normally we fish out of a jet boat that gets us into about eight inches of water, but because of the fluctuation in some of the rivers, sometimes you can't go when the water's too low. So we just got this hovercraft, and we don't worry about the river levels anymore because basically this thing flies about nine inches off the water or mm -hmm. off, off the ground. You can let it out in the parking lot if you want to, drive it right down the ramp, and you're fishing. All right, folks, you heard that. That's a hovercraft, and uh, that's what Alan's fishing out of out here on the river. So uh, appreciate him showing it to us. Oh, Thank you, Alan. Welcome. Anytime. We'll go fishing sometime. All right. Call me. I, right. I'd love to. It sounds good. All right. Thank you, buddy. Oh, you're welcome. Folks, we got right here with the Bunch family and uh, Curtis and Sheila and their daughter and two fishermen here, and they're up here at the uh, Sportsman's Expo in Clinton. So uh, remember Bunch Marine. You get to looking for a boat, go buy and see them. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, folks, we're back from that. Uh, like I said, man, that was a, a, a neat little adventure up there. If you haven't been there and you need the next year, make plans to attend. And and they had a lot of good stuff that I didn't get to film. Had some uh, uh, tackle vendors inside the building there, the activity building. And, and uh, I was really impressed, James.
That, that would look like some uh, really nice fish are those guys that caught and the musky fishing and the striper fishing uh, around this part of the country. We're for fortunate to have uh, a lot of great fishing opportunities for the folks. We sure are, and, and uh, that was uh, uh, that little hovercraft. Uh, he belongs to a group of guys, and, and all they do is fish the rivers, and uh, they run that thing. You know, he says, I don't need just a little bit of water to get that thing through there, and uh, uh, but I saw some more guys that was telling me about their rigs, and they all got jet props and this, that, and the other, and, and so they fish them rivers, you know, uh, uh, below uh, Cherokee and, and uh, Douglas Dam and, and here below Norse. Uh, that's all they do. They just got a group of them get together, and they fish about two times a month, he said. Well, that seemed like a pretty neat deal, a lot of good fellowship, and, and yep. also uh, learning about the outdoors, too. You can't hardly beat that combination, so. Uh, that's true, yeah. and... Good looking water, you know. I mean, it's the, you know uh, a lot of the water up between the dams. We don't get to see much of it. Us, but lake fishermen don't, you know. So uh, I, I really enjoyed that little conversation with them guys. Really did. Uh, Herschel, uh, folks, we got uh, right quick while Herschel's getting the other film ready. Uh, I went over Sunday. We had that benefit tournament. Uh, uh, the guys did for uh, 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 Kaylee uh, Overton and uh, the little four-year-old girl and, and, uh, that they uh, were raising money for and had a great time. Uh, you know, it just, uh, you know, it, it was just good to be involved in something like that for a good cause, James. And, and uh, uh, they had some fish, caught some fish out there, and, and uh, so uh, we'll, we'll look at that. Herschel, when you get ready to show that, just let me know. All right, just go ahead and do that right now, then we'll get a drink of water. Shoemaker's a waymaster. Brian's a tournament director. And uh, Brian, uh, Fred, so you got uh, 19 boats? 19 boats today. Okay. All right. And uh, Brian, pretty good turnout. Yeah, had a great turnout, especially for this weather. Yeah. Exactly. No kidding. No kidding. Water froze over most places, back in the shallows and all that kind of stuff. Uh, well, it's good that you got that big a turnout, and, and I hope everything runs good for the tournament. Thank you. It has. All right. Great deal. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate Thank it. You. Okay. Thank you. Remember the Let's Go Fishing <laughs> Show on Thursday night, and we'll try to catch the uh, way in and, and uh, see, see who's going to win. And Jim Williams. I fished, I fished his rod a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, Jim Williams is just coming in. And, Jim, just gonna, he's gonna in and <laughs> Jim's going to be here for the way in from Edgemore Outdoors, and we're glad to have Jim over here and, and help us run, get the way in over with. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Jim. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Edgemore, Edgemore Fishing Show is the best fishing show in the state. Yeah, it's the best Jim's donated a $250 bait caster yes, sir. giveaway, and, and uh, uh, so that's, uh, you know, Jim's always helping these, helping the community, guys. Yes, There's no, you, you can't beat him. I, I mean, you know, so uh, uh, we'll look forward to getting some fish on the camera. Word is there's some being caught out there today, so oh, yeah. uh, uh, we'll see. Yes, sir. Yeah. Fred Eubanks here, and uh, no. Fred's got a bag of fish. How many have no. Fred? You got five? Oh, he's got five keepers. Get them up there where we see them in the screen. There you go. There's a nice another one. Atta boy, Fred. Uh, I'm not going to ask you what you call them on, but what you catch them on? It's more bait and tackle Alabama rig. It's more bait and tackle Alabama rig. I wish you hadn't told me that, Fred. Now everybody be wanting to buy them crazy things. I hope they buy a bunch of them. How much weight do you have?
other time, right? All right. Can't beat that, folks. Thank you, Kylie. Appreciate it. Well, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Grandma. Bye.
$848. Come here, Saint. Hey folks, we're up here. All right, folks, we're back, and uh, uh, you know, I hope you enjoyed all that from over at Milton Hill. Uh, good, good little benefit tournament, James. Well, listen, uh, I forgot to say hello to Dad and Bill and Polly. Uh, they're off the get go. Uh, James has got a whole bunch of baits here. He and I talked last week about what we was going to talk about tonight, and and uh, so he's he made a little snack pack of. Uh, some wintertime baits, and James, let's just start picking them up there and tell us what, what, what you think about them. Well, we, we'll start out probably with the float and fly. I know that's been a East Tennessee thing for several years, and, and uh, I use the uh, one eighth ounce fly a lot, and then that's the uh, size bobber that I use. It's not real big either, but mm -hmm. a lot of four and six pound test line with okay. that. Right. And, uh, you know, I'll set it usually on lakes around here anywhere from uh, six foot to 12 foot deep and uh, it's a uh, pretty slow fishing but it's also uh, very effective in uh, when the water temperature gets below 50 degrees yeah it's a cold cold because the colder the better that's what what they all say and so you know it's a lot like crappie fishing uh, you can you know it's pretty simple actually you don't want to make it too complicated and mm -hmm. and uh, I just try to lob it up next to the bank, and uh, when your float stands up, that means your fly has got suspended off the bottom, and your float should stand straight up. And uh, once it does that, if it ever lays over on its side or goes under, 
that means you've got a fish yeah. pulling with it and uh, it's right. time to wind him yeah. in. So going from that to the uh, Alabama rig, Tennessee rig, yeah. or just umbrella rig, yeah. whatever you want to call it, uh, that's another great winter time, early spring type bait. And uh, any time when fish get suspended, that's when a lot of these baits like the float and fly and the uh, right. umbrella rig will work. And uh, in Tennessee, as far as I know, you can use the five arm uh, model. Right. And you can have uh, three baits on it with hooks. Yes, sir. You can, you can have as many baits on those five right. arms as, as you want to, but uh, I like to try to keep mine fairly simple, and I'll use uh, two, uh, four of the smaller baits on the outside arms and then try to run a little bit Maybe. larger bait in the middle. Mm -hmm. And uh, the two uh, weights that I have with hooks in them, I use one-eighth ounce on those bottom two weights and then usually a quarter to a three-eighths on the middle wire. Mm -hmm. And then up here on the top, I've just got some dummy baits rigged without hooks and I just took a hitchhiker into the snap or into the swivel yeah. and just screw that up on there and it just resembles a school of bait fish, fish coming through the water. It's a deadly unsuspended fish. Probably the best wintertime early spring bait there is to use out there. Right. You know, it's a little bit uh, troublesome to throw some, but if you got the right equipment and uh, the right rod and reel and stuff, it, it handles it pretty good. And it's I'm getting close to 60 years old, and it don't bother me mm -hmm. to throw it all day. So right. the main thing is just getting you a good, pretty stiff rod mm -hmm. with a long handle on it where you can just kind of lob it. it. Mm -hmm. You don't want to make a normal cast, you know, like you would right. with a lot of lures. But uh, if you got a, a nice rod with a long handle, it sure takes a lot of the work out of it. Yeah, I got you, James. You can use both hands on that thing in and kind of <laughs> help control it and, exactly. and get, it on, get, get it out there. That makes a lot of sense. Sure and, does. And then uh, this is a, another bait is the uh, swim yeah. bait. Yep. That's pretty versatile lure. And... You hear a lot of the big stringers caught this time of year on swim baits, umbrella rigs, but a lot of folks don't, you don't hear them talk about this one as much as the umbrella rig. Mm -hmm. But when the fish are deeper, I feel like the, uh, just the lead head with the uh, swim bait on it is a little more effective than the Alabama rig. And uh, mm -hmm. especially if they're relating closer to the bottom, I like to use like a four and a half inch, five inch swim bait half ounce head yeah and uh that way you can fish anywhere from five foot to 25 foot yeah and uh you know just uh, wind it slow enough to keep it near the bottom and, and uh even let it go to the bottom right yeah so it, that's a good big fish bait also that looks good james yeah. it sure does and then we'll start out by talking about some baits here that and that swim bait being one of them that I fish uh, when the fish are deeper in the winter time, like mm -hmm. on long points or humps or something like that. Right. If they're out on the ends of the long points or out on the main lake humps or or stuff like that, I like the swim bait. And then I use a silver buddy a lot also. And, and in that silver buddy, I use the uh, half ounce that, version right. more than any. And I know you're familiar with all these baits. Right. And the silver buddy, what you want to do, it's a lot like a jigging spoon in, in the fact that you want to let it hit the bottom and then just lift your rod up, let it fall back on a tight line is important because 90% of your strikes are going to come as the bait's falling back toward the bottom. So you just give it a lift, a nice quick lift up off the bottom, jerk it up, let it fall back, and what that resembles is a dying bait fish and uh, a great bait for the deeper yeah. fish yeah yeah cold weather conditions cold weather yeah, yeah for sure uh hey, if you're you know out uh, on the water right now you'll notice a lot of uh shad fl uh, fluttering around looks like you know they're, they're cold they can't move and, and that that bait right there works great it right. sure does and, and uh you know a lot of people like to cast it and fish it back like that or you can sit right on top of the fish and jig it vertically either way and it works just about as well uh Either way, it's a great cold weather bait. Yeah, I agree with that. 
you got that black little jig right there, James. That's, and I have to say, that's one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. and that's uh, something that, you know, been a big East Tennessee Keep thing me. for a long time, yeah. but it's uh, a lot of folks don't fool with it anymore. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, but the uh, I love a hair jig. This is a three sixteenths ounce. Yeah, boy. And I like a small <laughs> finesse trailer on it. And uh, yeah, usually I fish out on ten eight to ten pound okay. test line, and. I like this bait when the fish are up real shallow. You're not real shallow, but they they are in shallow water, but on steeper banks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and you want a bait that falls kind of slow, and uh, that's when your finesse style jigs really come into play, and uh, it it's a great producer for you. Sure is. That's a dandy color and, too. And black on black is a. Uh, Great color and yep. black and brown, black, black and, and blue. blue. Yes, sir. And, you know, with your darker colors on that. Yeah, boy, that's a dandy. That's and, a good-looking bait. And then uh, the other jig that I bought with me tonight is the uh, football-style jig head. Mm -hmm. And that that's another bait I use out in uh, deeper water. And uh, if I'm wanting to fish a jig, and I'll usually try to stick with a half ounce in the winter time. In the summer, or when the fish are a little more active, and I'm fishing deep, I go to a three quarter of an ounce. Mm -hmm. But in the winter, I try to fish a little bit lighter line, usually 14, 12, or 14, and uh, I use a half ounce uh, head, let it fall a little bit slower, give the fish more time to find it. And uh, but it's a great bait for fishing real slow out in deeper water. It's, it's something you can move it at about any speed you want to. And I, I kind of drag the uh, football jig more like a Carolina yeah. rigs yeah. style fishing instead of hopping it or anything mm -hmm. like you would in the summertime. Right. That head that you, that football head is really a, a designed to do, to, for that. Really. It is, yeah. you know, and it kind of crawls around yep. without getting hung no, up yep. too bad yeah. in the rocks and stuff. And uh, yeah. it's got that flat head and it keeps it out of the crevices and mm -hmm. uh, does a great job. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sure does. That's a good tip, James. You just passed on there about how to fish that thing. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that. And, yeah. You know, it's worked for me, and I, and that's one thing that I've been fortunate in my fishing career. You know, fishing's been good to me, and, and I always try to, if anybody's ever got any questions about fishing or anything I can help them with, I try to go out of my way to do yeah. that. And, and uh, I know sometimes people think you're telling them a tale yeah. if you, come into a weigh-in, you've got a good catch, and you say, well, I caught them on this. And, yeah. And uh, I've kind of been known as a crankbait fisherman, you know, over the years, and uh, I, I never will forget one time I won a tournament up on Fort Loudon, and I caught all my fish on a jig. Right. And uh, it was in the summertime, so everybody just assumed and I caught them on a deep crankbait. <laughs> And the first person asked me, said, how'd you catch him? I said, well, I caught him on a jig. And that guy said, yeah, I'm sure you did. You know, like, I know you was throwing a crankbait. Just go ahead and tell me. And, and so that happened about two or three times. And, and everybody I told, I caught him on a jig. They didn't believe, believe me. me. So the next guy comes up and he says, how'd you, how'd you catch your fish today? And I said, I caught him on a crankbait. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, it's a, it, but if, if people listen, you know, most of the fishermen around here in East Tennessee uh, are glad to share information, and that's one thing we're fortunate to have a, a lot of really good fishermen in this area. Like, I mean, you've talked about it several times, and there's a lot of guys can make a living at it if they had the right sponsorship and uh, yeah. the time and the money to do it. But, uh, you know, that's just about being in the right place at the right, right time too. a lot of times. So. Uh, that's it, James. You got it right. Well, you got some nice looking crankbaits there. Let's and that that's something that's uh, you know dear to my heart. I love to catch them on a crankbait, and uh, you can move a little faster, cover a little more water. But this time of year, you do want to slow down with it. Mm -hmm. And one way that I do that is by fishing a little bit slower gear ratio on my reels mm -hmm. because I want to wind real fast anyway. So. I use a little bit slower gear ratio mm -hmm. just to keep my bait slowed down a little bit. And this time of year, there's a, this, the bandits and the shad wraps, uh, I consider that more of a shallow water bait. Mm -hmm. And you're wanting to fish a little bit steeper banks this time of year, but, but 
a lot of days the fish will be up shallow on them. Right. Oh, yeah. And with these baits, I like to get in there and parallel or make a 45 degree cast. And, and I don't make real long cast. I want to be accurate throwing at particular things, uh, particular rocks, the crevices in them, and just kind of pick those banks apart and just wind a little bit slower. And, and uh, they, it may not be a real hard uh, strike. Your rod will just kind of load up, and, mm -hmm. and uh, next thing you know, you got a four or five pounder swimming out toward deeper water with it. But uh, right. the bandits and the shad wraps are real good baits for the uh, shallow cranking early in the year. Mm -hmm. And one of them's got a rattle in it, and the other one is more for a clear water, right. quieter. Yeah. And uh, the bandit I use a little more in stained water. Mm-hmm. All right. That, yeah. You like a little noise there. It's, right. Kind of like throwing a rattle trap there. That's, a, and that's true. And and the other thing, I, you know, uh, you want to try to match your uh, colors to your conditions. And a lot of times this time of year, you'll have cloudy weather, muddy or water. And if you uh, run into those conditions, the red, yeah. red colors are really good in that. So just keep that in mind. And then if it's clearer the water, the more natural you want your bait to look gotcha as a general rule all right and well, then steve we've got some more baits I, I don't know how much time we got to talk well, about let's it. get it to talk about the jerk baits and then we'll go to something else okay and then uh, now jerk baits the earlier in the season and the colder the water i like the uh long build jerk baits a lot of people mm -hmm. call them spoon bills it's a really good cold water bait They'll dive a little bit deeper. Right. Uh, I usually fish these on 8 to 12 pound test line, and the fluorocarbon line is a pretty big player in the jerk baits. Now, on the crankbaits and, and uh, stuff like that, you can. I, I use a lot of monofilament. I know a lot of guys are going to fluorocarbon with the crankbaits, but I don't really like the fluorocarbon line as much with the crankbaits because it's not as abrasive resistant. Right. as the monofilament, but with the jerk bait, you're throwing more toward open water, water. and you're not really grinding the bottom with your bait so mm -hmm. much. And, and so with those baits, I do use a lot of fluorocarbon because you're looking for that bait to suspend or, or sink real slow, you know, yeah. uh, or rise to the top oh. real slow. You don't, you don't want a lot of movement in it. Once, once you find your cadence, you'll give it some jerks to get it down, pause it for five to 15 seconds, mm -hmm. jerk it another time or two, pause it again. Right. And uh, the deeper the bill, as a general rule, the longer the bill, the deeper the bait's gonna run. Mm -hmm. And uh, the clown color is a real good color for small mouth and large mouth on cloudy days. And then as true with your crankbaits, if you get clear water or calmer conditions, clearer conditions, I'll use more of a shad okay. style yeah. color. Yeah, that's a good uh, color right there yeah. too, James. Sure and uh, you know, Lucky Craft, that's a Lucky Craft. These are rogues, and and you want something that either suspends or sinks real it's slow or, or rises, rises real slow. slow. Yeah, because the fish are kind of sluggish. Uh, they're looking for a bigger meal. They may not eat as much, but mm -hmm. you know, they might eat something bigger. You know, this time of year because they're not going to eat as many times. Right. Exactly right. But. but uh, you just have to kind of play the conditions in the day, and uh, the next thing is the rattle traps. And, and for some reason around here, uh, rattle traps really get good in March, not so much in January and February, but you know, mm -hmm. March, yep. the middle of March yep. on, they'll start getting real good. But now this time of year, you can go to a lake like Gunnersville, and yeah, it's nothing to catch <laughs> twenty plus pounds on it, you know. So right, but uh. One way that I do fish it in the winter that that has caught a lot of fish on me here uh, around this area is uh, kind of like the silver buddy, mm -hmm. where you jig it, it up, yeah. up off the bottom and let it fall back instead of a slow, steady retrieve or a fast retrieve. I kind of hop it and let it fall back, and and uh, you'll get a lot of bites on it that way. It around here this time of year, I guess the water's a little cooler, you know, and and they oh, just yeah. want that dying minute. Yeah, that's it right there. Yeah. Sure is. 
Well, James, that's some good information, folks, and, and some good baits and, and some good tips on how to fish them. And uh, I know James wouldn't be telling you that if he hadn't caught a lot of fish on. Well, I, I'm not caught as many as I'd like to, but I have I have been fortunate to have some success, and, and uh, I feel blessed to have done that. And you know, these baits have helped me win a lot of money, and I don't care to share it with the other folks. And uh, if they'll try them and, and just be patient and if you don't know that's one thing if you don't know how to fish a particular bait just walk up to somebody you know that fishes a lot start a conversation and let them know you know uh, that you're trying to learn and and they'll be more than glad as a general rule to help you so anybody that you know that fishes a lot and you got any questions just you know they may not tell you specific spots but they will try to help you learn new techniques techniques, and, uh, you know, different ways to fish at different lakes. Agree. That's exactly exactly right. Uh, well, we appreciate all that. I've got a couple of announcements to make right quick, folks, and, and uh, then we're going to turn the phones on here in a second. Uh, <clears throat> talking with uh, Reynolds, uh, Glenn Reynolds at Reynolds Racing Marine, Glenn's contemplating on putting on a crappie tournament right here in the next few weeks. Uh, uh, maybe around the first or uh, March or middle of March, uh, and uh, I'll have some more information on that. Hopefully next week he'll have the dates finalized and that kind of thing. And uh, James, I'm looking forward to that because he's talking about having a big fish fry after the tournament. Well, uh, I'm all about that. I that mean, sounds good. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> so uh, I'm I'm real interested to in see what Glenn comes up with on that. And uh, uh, Edgemore Outdoors, uh, Jim still got that. Uh, uh, those racks of baits back there, it's, he's got 30% off on those. and So uh, get by Edgemore Outdoors and, and uh, get with Jim on that. Uh, Mountain Pizza, uh, they've got, uh, they want to say thank you. They had a bit, great turnout for the Super Bowl special they had. Uh, so uh, they still got their one top and large pizzas for eight ninety nine, and then all the toppings you want for twelve ninety nine on the on the large pizzas there. But they did want to thank everybody for participating in that uh, Super Bowl special. Uh, the, uh, the final date on the, uh, we've got a tournament trail here. It's the Tennessee Valley Team Championship Series uh, presented by Bunch Marine. There's four or five sponsors, Mercury, Ranger, Triton, uh, Cherokee, uh, Distripton, and so on and so forth. They finally got their dates finalized. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get Brandon Coulter over here. He's going to be helping with these two tournaments and uh, uh, get him to explain a lot of that to us and that kind of thing. Got a Heartland tournament going on at Caney Creek uh, Saturday and one at Point 19 Saturday. Mike hadn't made up his mind which one of them he wants to fish, but I'm sure he'll be in one of them. Uh, and then the Catfish Anglers, East Tennessee Catfish Anglers, their first tournament's at Ish Creek on Fort Loudon, March the 1st. Marty Carpenter, that's 310-1328, 310-1328. Marty Carpenter is the uh, tournament director there, and you guys that's wanting to get into this catfishing, and, uh, uh, man, I tell you what, there's something else. And anyway, they got their first tournament coming up here March the 1st. Give Marty a call. That's at Ish Creek over there on Fort Loudon uh, where they're going to be, and you can register that morning of the tournament. Uh, 15 minutes before blast off, let me say that. But uh, you can get all that information uh, on their website. Man, i put that flyer right here. Hold on just a second. Uh, you can get, I meant to write that down. Uh, let's see here. Well, I'll take that back. I don't see it on the paper here. Uh, but if you'll contact him, we can give you about all the information you want to do if you guys are interested in doing that for sure. Uh, one other thing, uh, two things I meant to mention, photo of the month, folks. We're, you know, days the 6th, uh, Sam Richardson and Travis Richardson won uh, December's, and so uh, if you get get some, get some a fish or anything you want to send me, send it there uh, to uh, uh, Let's Go Fishing 101 uh, yahoo.com and, and uh, I can pull that up and get a picture, you know, print it off and and get, get in on that and get you a T-shirt. Uh, before we turn the phones on, I'm going to announce this right here. I'm going to give away, 
I say giveaway. I'm going to provide a free fishing trip for the viewers. Uh, here's the catch. Uh, and I hope to get this started next week or in the next week or so. I'm going to set some cans up or some boxes or whatever and some tickets at the vendors or at my sponsor's place. And you'll have to go by the sponsors to register. We'll run that for three or four weeks. And then I'll bring all the tickets in here to the show. We'll draw the winner out, and then it'll be whatever you want to do. If you want to brim fish, crappie fish, bass fish, uh, we'll wait. It, 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 it'll be up to you. But uh, I'll provide, if we need my boat to, to go fishing, I'm going to give take somebody on a free fishing trip. If, if you'd want to go with me, I'd sure appreciate it. So uh, uh, that's going to be coming. And as uh, quick as I can get the... Uh, the tickets printed, they're working on those right now. I get them delivered and get the canister set up for you to register at the uh, uh, sponsors. And, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll draw the winner and go from there. So uh, I hope we have a lot of participation in that. And that lets me know that people's watching the show and, and uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Herschel, I tell you what, do that Tim Starr thing and we'll come back, folks, and turn the phones on and hopefully I'll have some good... Calls for James here. Some good questions. Look forward to it. All right. How many times can you register? Every time you buy something. Hey folks, I'm here at Tim's Tire, and uh, I showed you there some of the piles of tires he's got down here. You truckers, he's got all kinds of tires for your uh, uh, on-the-road, off-road vehicles, uh, your trucks, uh, uh, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, yeah, just like I said, he's got tires for everything. Come by here and see Tim. I, I don't, I, I know you're not going to beat his price. Uh, he won't let you beat his price. And uh, so uh, come by down here at Harriman, see Tim, Tim Steyer, and uh, uh, let him earn your business. And, if, you know, if nothing else, can't drive down here, call him, get the price on him. They'd be more than glad to give you that. And, uh, uh, you know, they do the uh, mountain and balancing up here in the tire shop and, and uh, brakes and, and, and struts things of that nature you know uh, uh, on your on your vehicle if you need be while you're there so uh, uh, come on down and, and, and see Tim down here to Tim's tire the one in the Harriman on your left there and uh, also too don't forget about these helmets there's quite a few empty spaces out there but there's still quite a few helmets he's got a marked down half price uh, a variety of every kind of thing uh, on the helmet he's got some that's just the shell some that's got uh, Without the uh, the uh, visor, uh, some with the flip up, flip down visors on them. So uh, just come down here and visit with Tim uh, on the tires and, and look these helmets over. And uh, hope to see you tonight on the night show. <laughs> All right, folks. Herschel, can you turn the phones on for us? Phones are on. Okay. Uh, We'll see who calls in, James, and, and uh, uh, ask us some questions or want to verify any kind of thing on their tournament on your tournament trail and that kind of stuff, and uh, uh, we'll see what goes on here. But uh, we'll just keep talking, and, and you know about this fishing trip thing, and, and uh, I get those uh, uh, tickets printed up, get those to the sponsors, and, and hopefully you can go in and register to do that, and and. Uh, you know, whoever the winner is, I'm going to let them pick the place and the date. Well, that sounds like a really neat deal and something the folks ought to really be able to get behind. And uh, I'll be going by there and 
Red screw myself. Yeah. <laughs> so well, they, I'm, I'm just. I'm gonna fall. I, I, what I'm gonna do is put you in my boat, and I'll let you <laughs> do the run, and I'm just gonna watch. <laughs> no, no. I, I get to learn your fishing holes this time. Oh Lord. But they. Uh, that's a neat deal, yep. and I think the folks will really appreciate that. Your viewers and uh, should be good for all you sponsors, and you know it's really great to have these sponsors and. Uh, you know the folks that are interested in fishing and and the fishing show here and and you know wanting to learn more about it. That's a good thing to support those folks and because uh, they they're the ones that make this possible and, and it takes a lot of time to put together a show like this. It it it, it really does. I I couldn't uh, I couldn't do it without them and and uh, there's no way and you know I appreciate every one of them. And, and there's some I've had that I don't have now and hopefully get them back, you know, when things, economy picks up a little bit. Uh, they're wanting to come back and, and uh, shoot, I'll be glad to have them when they get ready, uh, for sure. So, uh, let's, let's see who we got. Hello, caller. Steve. Yes, sir. I'm at Orange and White tournament that he's talking about there. I don't have a computer. Where can you get a flyer at? Uh, all your local... Uh Tackle stores will have those. Uh, I'll have some down at Glenn's place at Reynolds Racing in uh, Harriman. And uh, what tackle store do you go by mostly? Uh, it doesn't matter. What about down Jerry's in Rockwood? Yeah, they would definitely have them. And you can pick them up there. And uh, When's your first tournament start? Our, our first tournament is coming up February 22nd. And it's at Watts Bar Lake. And... Uh, you can sign up on Friday the night before, or and that's going to be at Tom Fuller Park, or you can sign up the morning of the tournament, and the tournament hours are going to be from 8 till 3, and we'll start taking money at uh, 5 o'clock that morning. Okay. No late fee or anything. Yeah. Now, if uh, you, if you do... I'm even so, on your uh, free fishing trip, you sure you're not going to be up in front of the boat or are you going to be in the back? Well, it's just what, whoever wins it, whatever they want me to do. <laughs> You're not putting Mike on them racing stripe fish. <laughs> I know. Yeah, Mike's putting me on a lot of them. I, I tell you what, I don't know about Mike sometimes. I don't know. It seems like it's the way around here. He's one of the front of the boat. He's always got them. Well, uh, you know, he's he's back there catching them. I, yeah, he could he can not set the hook or just say, oh, it's a rockfish, I ain't going to jerk, you know, but he won't do it. <laughs> you always got excuse for something, Mike. <laughs> hey, you're right, Larry. We 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 enjoy catching them, and uh, you know for sure. How's your dad done? He's doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. I was asking about him. Tell him to say hello. I'll do it, buddy. Sure will. Hey, on your uh, film tonight, there it was real foggy, like. Yeah. Did you get out there and film it? Yeah, it was. It was foggy over our Sunday. Oh, uh, that what it was? Yeah, that. I shoot. I, I had to turn the light on of the camera during the daylight just to get it to film. I, I thought maybe you landed. Fogging up since it was cold. Not well. It was cold, and uh, I I couldn't believe it was that foggy. But it was hazy, foggy, and and uh, you know I I was afraid that it wouldn't film at all, but it did, or partly filmed anyway. They brought in some good fish. Cold it was. They they did. They had some good fish over there. Sure did. All right, Steve. Good talk to him. Well, you make sure to take it down and ask him about him. I'll do it, buddy. Thank you, bud. All right, take care. All right. See. You. Thanks. Okay. Good questions. Good deal. All right. Well, uh, no. yeah, he was asking about the uh, the dates on that, and our first one is February twenty second at uh, Watts Bar Lake, and we're mm -hmm. going out of uh, Tom Fuller Park there in Rockwood, and uh, that's that's something kind of interesting that we are doing. If you mail in your entry form this year, uh, or if you come on Friday and register, uh, you get to choose your boat number. Oh well, heck, that's, that sounds good. Hello. Hello, caller. Can you hear me? Hey. Yeah. Mike, who's that you got sitting there beside of Who's that I got sitting there beside of me? Yeah. Well, you know who that is. I... I've never seen him before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've seen him a lot. <laughs> hey, uh, one bait. That I, I've used in this cold weather is a, a spinner bait. I didn't hear you mention that. Well, I figured if I brought out all these baits, Willie, it'd be a 
be a hard thing to get on the table here. <laughs> but a spinner bait is a great bait, and uh, you know the single blade or the uh, uh, double bladed bait are both great this time of year. Oh yeah. You wouldn't like you don't like throwing spinner baits much, do you? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, just throw it all the time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hey, Steve, can I go? What fishing? Fishing. Yeah, if you if you win the drawing, you definitely can go. Well, what if I don't win? Well, we'll we'll go in your time. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. Uh, All right. I just I just thought maybe James forgot about that son of a bitch. Oh no, nah. I never. I just don't like to talk about it as much as, uh, you know, some things you got to hold back just a little bit, Will. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think you brought out the secret, Willie. <laughs> it is an all-around year bait. It certainly it is. is. It certainly is. Uh, you can fish you it slow. Or... Yes, sir. And Willie Word there, that's who we're talking to but, in, in Harriman yeah. and he makes a lot of really good spinner baits and and stuff and and knows how to use them. He he, he does that. That's a fact. Willie, you glad. Have a good night. And I, hopefully, I'll get to fish some of the tournaments. I don't know if I get to fish all of them or not. Hopefully, I will. Y'all have a good night. God bless you. Thank you, Willie. We sure appreciate you. All right, buddy. All right, have a good one. Okay, bud. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Okay, good to hear from Willie, and he does make a good spinner bait. He sure does, and that's uh, he brought up an interesting point, talking about getting to fish some of the tournaments, and that's one thing that we're doing that's a little bit different. We don't really have a championship or anything. Mm -hmm. We're doing 12 tournaments total, but each tournament is kind of like a championship in the fact that it pays 100% of the money back that day and we're not keeping any of the money to go toward a championship, championship. or anything. Mm -hmm. And so if you just want to fish one, or if you want to fish all 12, you're going to be fishing for all your money back that day. Right. You don't have to wait to the end of the year for a championship. And, and it, uh, it, it's going to vary by the number of boats you got. Exactly. Right and, uh, yeah. Last year, uh, I run the bite tournament for a bunch of years, and, and we guaranteed some really nice money last year in our tournaments, but what happened is, you know, at several of them, you'd only get enough to maybe pay three places because you had X amount of dollars guaranteed, and so mm -hmm. what I was hearing from people and, and what they were wanting, it seemed like, were, was paying more places and not really uh, having the guaranteed money. What we do guarantee is that we're going to pay 100% of the money back and going to pay one place for every five boats. So if you get 50 boats, you'll pay 10 mm -hmm. places. Yeah. And uh, on a 50-boat tournament uh, or a 30-boat, whatever, uh, last place in the money will double your entry fee. All right. Well, that sounds good, James. I, you know, it sounds like you give that thing a lot of thought uh, of what the fishermen are looking for. Uh, it sounds real good. Uh, folks, we don't have much time left. I do want to say this. I appreciate you being over, James. Uh, got a lot of good information, and, and it's been great to have you on the show. Uh, we got to uh, remember the sponsors, folks. Uh, uh, you know, C&D Printing up there, Mountain Pizza, Knox Area Rescue Ministries, Tim's Tire, uh, Citizens First Bank, the five locations, Edgemore Outdoors, the sign shop, uh, rentals and uh, racing marine and, and, and also bunch marine down there and we've got a website there remember that on the Tennessee Bass Trail uh, www.volunteerbasstrail.com and uh, uh, to get you more information on that and like James says there'll be a bunch of flyers around at uh, some of the locations uh, got more information to come and I and, and, uh, hope you enjoyed the show and God bless you and we'll see you next week